I went through so many versions to try to arrive at something that looks like a movie poster. Yeah. And then I made this and a friend of mine said, oh yeah, this looks like it won a Palme d'Or. <laughs> so, yeah. I am Erdem Tashtelen and we are currently inside uh, my exhibition, uh, A Minaret for the General's Wife at Mercer Union. A Minaret for the General's Wife is a new body of work that revolves around the story of uh, the Kedaini Minaret, which is an architectural folly in a small town in Lithuania. And um, I was really surprised the first time I came across images of this architectural folly because I'd never seen a freestanding minaret before. So I, I wanted to travel there and see it for myself and uh, find out why this odd-looking thing ended up uh, in such an unlikely place. I recorded a lot of sound um, on site, so some of the sound ended up um, in the exhibition. This is a Lithuanian song from the 1930s, which is referenced in, in one of the texts. The Kedaini Minaret was built in 1880 by a Russian army general to celebrate his victory in the Russian-Turkish War of 1877. Um, and during my time in Lithuania, I was able to find historical information about the construction of this minaret. But I also learned that there's a local myth about how this Russian general had a Turkish lover and how he built this minaret as a romantic gesture for her. This is all made up and I don't know how this myth began, but I was kind of fascinated by how the cultural significance of something shifts when it's taken out of its original context and how um, new stories are uh, fabricated to attribute new meanings to it. Writing is at the core of my practice, so most of my projects begin with some form of writing and eventually evolve into uh, an installation or a multimedia series of works. And that's how this project began as well. I started by writing about this minaret from different perspectives, including that of this imaginary Turkish wife. So the project really became an exercise in thinking about what if, instead of trying to be historically accurate, I kind of um, populate uh, the story of this minaret with different characters, different perspectives, some of whom are real, some made up by me, so that the, the minaret actually serves as a metaphor in the end for how we're all collectively entangled in um, making sense of uh, things in the public realm. The exhibition is made up of images and objects that may look as though they are theatrical props to be used in the creation or staging of a story. But what ties everything together in the end is a booklet of 12 texts that uh, reference the minaret in some way. So there's something quite forensic in the exhibition where all of these elements uh, refer to each other in subtle ways, or they might suggest that they're pieces of a larger whole. The pandemic has pushed me to reconsider how these works will be engaged with in the space and uh, it's introduced a new set of conditions that I really tried to incorporate into the experience of, of the exhibition. Um, I wanted to create a kind of a provisional environment that feels like it's um, suspended while it was in use. Uh, so there's this ghostly sense of bodies having been in the space before you as the viewer arrived at the scene and maybe hopefully a sense of togetherness even though you're not sharing the space uh, with other bodies in real time. And so the exhibition kind of um, frames itself as uh, a future-oriented event where all of these different elements that are in the show might get reconfigured by um, actors who finally stage this thing called a minaret for the general's wife whatever it ends up being. <laughs>